Crystal Wade here with Hope Streams. The Lord has given me a message to share with you today, and I value your time. And I try to make these messages as brief as possible while still covering the content. So if you will stay with me to the end, we'll be out ahead of the curve by being able to agree together in prayer. The Lord said, what we perceive, we receive. What we perceive, we receive. And this is both a timeless message and it is a time sensitive message. Perceive in Webster's Dictionary is talking about to be aware, to have understanding, and to be aware through the physical senses. Now here is the clincher. We have spiritual senses and we have physical senses. Now, bear with me a minute. We are dual citizens. It talks about in scripture in Philippians 3.20. We are, if we're born again, we're seated with Christ in the heavenlies and we are living on this earth. We are actually in at least two places, if not more, at the same time. So we are perceiving spiritually, we are perceiving physically, and these are through our senses, whether or not we are aware. And that is the message that the Lord has been building and moving me to share with you today that is, it's timeless, but it's very time sensitive. So he wants us to be aware when there was the eclipse in April, and there's been eclipses through uh, history, but this eclipse in April was very well publicized and people were having a wide variety of responses to it. Some people felt really afraid and some people felt awe. And some people were even talking about the fact that it feels like such a spiritual experience. And I believe that it is a spiritual experience in the fact that the father set the all of the constellations the sun moon and stars uh, he talks about in genesis 1 to set the the days the times and the seasons and these are spiritual and physical times and seasons that these heavenly bodies are marking and our spirit senses that so we are perceiving in the spiritual realm and some people were feeling fear and other people were feeling awe at the same event. Okay, so what we are perceiving on the spiritual level goes beyond our physical senses, but it can be under the surface because we're not seeing it with our eyes daily. And our perceptions are at risk of distortion. Our perceptions are at risk of distortions and this can be personally for us personally and it can be on the generational level. We can perceive things better or worse than they are because of a distortion on our perception. You, you know the, the fun houses in some carnivals in the U.S. for sure, I don't know if they're in other nations, but you go into this room of mirrors and it's supposed to be fun. I think it's, personally, I think it's not fun. <laughs> but you go into this room of mirrors and it's just pulling you in all these directions physically so you don't look like yourself. You look taller or like part of you had sunk down, part of you had swollen up, just not, you don't look like yourself but you are still yourself, but in these mirrors, you don't look like yourself. It's a distortion. So you are perceiving differently based on the mirror in this room. Okay, Egypt. In Egypt, when Israel uh, existed there for over 400 years and 400 plus years in slavery, they, well, one thing, it's pretty awful to be in slavery. You, you have no rights, uh, you get, harsh punishment you get no mercy and not enough to meet your needs and it's just it's just a really horrible situation and all of us have lived in that state 
in our lives because all of us have been slaves to sin uh, until we are working it out with the Lord. The Lord's done the work, but we uh, are partnering with him so that it's gone from our lives. He's paid the price to set us free from slavery to sin. So my point is that everyone has experienced some level of slavery, but it was really, it's really awful when you are a physical slave. So Egypt was, was surrounded, the, the whole nation filled with these huge structures. We know them as pyramids. There were other structures as well. And the, if you think about the pyramid, it is a building that is upside down. It's the foundation is up when the foundation should be down. So things are upside down and backwards from what they should be even the structures. They were huge. There were other structures in Egypt that were also huge. So here are people that are in slavery, walking around every day, seeing these huge structures that are not even as they're supposed to be. And they are feeling horrible from the treatment they are receiving. They are also feeling bad and small about themselves from this constant projection. Okay. Hear this constant projection, constant landscape of fear and of everything that is put into motion to make a person feel insignificant, small, worthless of no account, etc. It's the very design of the buildings of the landscape in the nation. Now, this is uh, many different things about that, but the main point is people are the treasure. People are created by Father. They are the treasure and they are the God-given ruler of this earth. They are not created to be slaves to systems, to the wicked, to anything else. All right? And you know the story. God miraculously showed his power was mightier than everything in Egypt, including but not limited to their structures. He, he, in the power show, God won hands down in his mighty acts of power and all Egypt knew it. Then God led Egypt Israel out into the wilderness. He formed them into a new nation. And then he said, now it's time to go. Uh, this, it was not your end to leave slavery. It was not your end to transition in the wilderness. It is your new beginning to be in this land. I promised your forefathers. That's your new beginning. That's not even your end. And in order to do this, they had to face their giants, face their giants, if you will. And only Joshua and Caleb perceived correctly. Now listen to this verse in Numbers 13. So Numbers 13, 33. When they saw the sons of Anak, who are part of the, read your Bible, we were like grasshoppers in our own sight And so we were in their sight, grasshoppers. That was their perception. Alternatively, the perception of Joshua and Caleb, we read about in Numbers 14. And Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, of those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes and spoke to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us to this land and give it to us. It's a land that flows with milk and honey. Only don't rebel against the Lord and don't fear the people of the land, for they will be our prey. Their protection is gone from them. The Lord is with us. Do not fear. In the King James Version, Caleb and Joshua are saying, Not that they'll be prey, but these people will be bred. These people fighting these people who uh, 
were giants, okay? This is the same type that David went up against, David and Goliath. Fighting these people will be bread for us. It will make us strong. We will be nourished by fighting them and overcoming them. That was Joshua and Caleb's perception, okay? And then the King James Version also says, uh, when, well, the NASB says their protection is gone, and the King James Version says their shadow is gone, meaning their backing, all right, the backing that backed them on the spiritual front, which was from Father's ancient enemy, it was gone. Father had dealt with them, and their backing was gone, and Joshua and Caleb sensed this. They sensed it in their spirit, and they said, and they spoke it. They they sensed it. They believed it, and they spoke it. And they said, "Don't rebel against the Lord, and don't fear these people." And they had solid reasons to stand on based on what they were perceiving. But you know the story. Uh, Israel listened to the ten spies that said, "We are grasshoppers," and the reason that they agreed with it, with the perception of these 10 spies, is because they had lived in Egypt and that was their experience. It was over 400 years, so it was a personal and generational perception from their experience. It was based on what they had actually gone through in their physical senses. And they received what they perceived. And Joshua and Caleb did too, but they had to wait a little bit longer for it. But that was not the Father's plan. So the Father is with us. I'm talking to you and I. The Father is with us and we can do it. And this is on an individual level. This is on a corporate level. Okay, listen to the man that's well, remind be reminded of the story of the man with the talents in Matthew 25. So the the good master gave talents, five talents to one man, two talents to another, and one talent to the third. Went on a trip and said, you know, do well with this money. And he came back, and the the man with the five, the man with the two, they had put that money to work and they had doubled it. And the third man, the one the one man with the talent, one talent said. Master, I knew that you were a hard man, reaping where you hadn't sown. And so I buried your talent, and here it is. Now, I want you to, to recognize that it doesn't say this in all the Bibles, but some of the footnotes give us understanding into what a talent was. It was 75 pounds. So 75 pounds, either five of the 75 pounds, two of the 75 pounds, or even one talent of 75 pounds is nothing insignificant. That is is not coming from a hard man. That is generous to give anybody 75 pounds. If I had were given 75 pounds of silver, I would feel that that was generous. So he was generous with all of them, but that third man perceived the master as being hard and asking to receive what he hadn't given. And that man, how he perceived, he received. So this is on an individual and corporate level. All right. And the Lord with this message has been telling me, and I'm sharing it with you, that how we perceive determines what we will receive. And this is always true this is timeless but it is crucial in the it's crucial all right so what can we do what can we do we're going to pray and dedicate our perception we need to be aware that we need to be aware that what we are perceiving if we start perceiving something in fear we need to stop and breathe and go to the lord don't jump on the bandwagon. Okay, so this is actually action steps. If you are perceiving something in fear or any other negative, and 
fear is the top one right now, okay? Stop and breathe. Get with the Lord. Don't jump on the bandwagon. I'm sure there were things Joshua and Caleb could have felt fear about, but they chose to believe what their spiritual senses were telling them. When they went through the land, they could tell that the backing of these very large bad guys was gone. All right, there was no spiritual backing to them. And that by overcoming them, they would be strengthened. And they also knew that the Lord was with them. So just don't fear and don't rebel against the Lord and just stand on what you are picking up on the spiritual level. Okay, so if you are picking up fear on the spiritual level, stop and breathe. <laughs> stop and breathe. Um, get to a place of prayer. Ask the Lord. Just don't jump on the bandwagon there because uh, He can clear that out and shift you. And in these days, the backing of these ones, it's gone. He is removing the backing. Okay? And us going forward individually and corporately as He leads us, we're not going to rebel in God's grace. We commit this to you, Lord. We're not going to fear in God's grace. We commit it to you, Lord, because we can't do it on our own. We have to commit it to him and ask him to strengthen us here so we can walk with him in his grace. And they going against them, wherever he has us to, is going to be bread and strength for us. And the beginning of being in this new land, which is uh, physical, physically and spiritually. Okay, it's on many different levels. New frontiers, new fronts, new inventions, newness is what the Father promised to our forefathers. So he's with us. It's time. All right. So let's pray and dedicate our perceptions and give the Lord permission and room. Hey, dear, dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you now in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, hidden with Christ and God with praise and thanks. Father, I worship you and I welcome you. And Father, for everyone who agrees, we just say that we individually dedicate our perceptions to you, Father. And that they are consecrated to you and brought into newness of recreation in Christ, saturated with the blood of Christ. So that we are perceiving spiritually and physically through you as you would have us to. And we open them to you day and night for you to rewire us personally and, and where we have been wired personally, where we have been wired generationally in slave structures, in fear structures, in fear and slavery structures, in our perceptions, in distortions that you're rewiring us out of that into the new creation in Christ where we are more than conquerors, where we know that you are with us and you back us and you lead us, guide us and protect us, that you comfort us, you guide us with your, your shepherd staff and you even war on our behalf as you go before us and remove the protection from the wicked and bring us into the land that you promised our forefathers to give us. So we just open this up to you, Father, to rewire in your love and your truth through the blood of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And everything that would rise up against that in us, that would be speaking those things of lies, we're just receiving the saturation of the blood of Christ through those to bring us out of that, out of the slavery, out of the distortions, out of the fear structures, and into your love in the new creation and your power and your sound mind. And that you would confirm and direct our perception in Christ. And we would know what to believe, what to speak, what to act on. 
In the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Father, clear, clear view, clear way, clear as day, rivers of life flow. If you agree, say amen. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you like this video, I'd love to invite you to check out our YouTube channel for other videos. And also, join us at hopestreams.net. We have many free resources, as well as a weekly newsletter and other products available there as well.